Hi guys, welcome back to this Model Engineer's Workshop. I'm the chef. Today's something again a little bit different. So first off I'm going to start with, can you please like, subscribe and hit the bell for notifications? If you can find it in your soul to do that for me, that would be great. Thanks a lot. Alright guys, so today here on the bench I have a rather nice 24 inch breaker bar. Now you might be asking, what's that got to do for model engineering? Right, well there's a Facebook group I'm a member of that has recently been talking about cold riveting. Now cold riveting is in fact just the process of forming a riveting a rivet to hold two or more bits of metal together. The usual method is to use rivet snaps which are little pieces of hardened steel that you use to hold the head of the, the uh, rivet you're using still first off and then you put the material on the top and you use the rivet, the second rivet snap to set the material and then you use the, set the, the snap again to actually form the head. Now this involves big hammers and lots of noise. Um, I'll probably insert here a page just to give you a quick and dirty description on uh, how rivet snaps work and maybe a photo of a rivet snap if I can find one because I don't own any but uh, just pause the video at that and then you'll be able to read it at your leisure. Now of course the other method is to use a rivet press. Rivet presses are more common in the smaller sizes but I'm building in seven and a quarter. Now of course seven and a quarter then needs a heavy duty version of a rivet press. Here we have, excuse the welding, I'm not a welder, I'm a chef. Is a heavy duty rivet press. As you can see, this is a nice great big chunk of steel. It's three quarters of an inch thick. These holes were already in it. I've no idea what it was from or for. This was a scrap yard find, junk yard. The only thing I did, I machined this throat in it to give me some room to work in. I welded on the two couple of nuts. Now these are M20 couple of nuts. This is a bit of M20 uh, all thread, thread rod, threaded rod. As you can see, there's a dimple. If it will focus, there we go. Nice dimple in the top of that one, which holds the rivet head. So the rivet is pointing upwards in the bottom of this. Oh, I can't get down low enough. Maybe I can. Yep, there you go. You can just make out the dimple in the bottom of this. This is an M20 square head bolt. I think it's called a dog headed bolt. I'm not sure. And this involves just literally getting the threaded rod into place, slot in here, the rivet with the two bits of material, normally the buffer beam and an angle or whatever it is you're riveting could be the sides of a the frame onto a tank side or for a tender or anything like that. Get this in a little bit of grease in here. I normally use the blue lithium grease because it's high pressure, high density, whatever they call it. And then this is where the breaker bar comes in. The breaker bar goes on the top of there. Once you've got this tightened down, so rivet head, material, two lots of material in here normally. This gets tightened down to hold the rivet in place and it takes about two and a half turns of the breaker bar to compress that rivet down. Now the rivets of course have been cut or you, if you're lucky you can buy them the right length because you need to have I believe it's one and a half times the diameter of the rivet sticking above the second material, second piece of material to form a dome head. So of course once it's tightened down then two and a half turns and it's not difficult turns either. I find Personally, you get two on dead easy. The last half is both hands on here and not pulling with the elbows because that would make him hurt, but just literally lean into it with your, oops, with your body weight. And uh, they go down easy and nice and tight. So this was a, there was a lot of discussion on the face group group, face page group I'm a member of, somebody was asking about how do we rivet and all this. 
Yes, you can take hammers to them and sets to them. That's great. That's wonderful. If your workshop is down the end of the garden and the neighbours don't mind the noise. Well, my workshop isn't. My workshop's attached to the house. Uh, I've got a wife and I'm pretty sure she wouldn't take it too kind of me banging and hammering away too much. The machinery noise isn't too bad because she can drown that out with the radio. But actually banging and thumping and banging and thumping for what could be at least an hour, especially if you're putting in 8, 10, 12 rivets, would probably be a little bit too much for the household authorities, so I've decided not to do it. This whole thing, I think the plate cost me about 8 bucks from the scrapyard. This was about 4 bucks, I believe it was off eBay. This came from Bunnings here in Australia, which is a DIY sort of supply place. The cutter for that I had anyway. The welding was just welding supplies. As I say, it's real bubblegum welding is that. But again, I'm not a welder, I'm a chef. And I think the saying goes something along the lines of the paint and a, gr a grinder and a paint makes me the welder I ain't. Well, in this case, guess what? Paint and a grinder didn't even really come in to make me a welder at all, did it? This bolt, I just gently held it in the lathe and machined the dimple in the bottom. The threaded rod, I got the two coupler nuts spaced out correctly on it. A couple of big clamps, got some tacks onto here using the thread rod to keep the alignment once they were welded on. Both sides, of course, front and back. Uh, thread, the threaded rod came out. Cut a bit off. Again, held by the threads gently in the, in the lathe, created the dimple. So that was easy enough. The rest of the threaded rod now is in store because this is this dimple and this bolt are designed to, for uh, a 3 imperial iron rivet. If I need to go to a quarter inch rivet, I'll need a bigger dimple so I can just create a new anvil. I'll buy a new bolt, create a set. So this is the 3 16th set, create a quarter set. I could create an eighth set. I can go in any directions. The only great uh, investment after that would be possibly, I would have to test it and see, would possibly to go to a 36, bre 36 inch breaker bar which of course would give me a greater mechanical advantage for compressing a larger rivet head. Um, can't show you any pieces in, uh, in motion at the moment, but once I get round to actually putting the locomotive frames together, there will be some rivets. I think there's eight, 16, 32 rivets needed just to hold the angle, the buffer beam angles onto the buffer beams. So 16 at the front, 16 at the back. And when I do that, then we'll have some action shots. I'll get the camera mounted onto a tripod and you'll, I'll show you. It's two and a half turns, not great difficult. You've got God knows how much strength in the steel here and here, so it's virtually impossible to break it. I suppose the only thing that might break would be my crappy welding. Um, and it's pretty much silent, except maybe for the moans and groans that I make. Um, but it, when I did the tender frames, it worked perfectly. Didn't take long. They're dead easy. Get one, you know, everything's bolted up. Whip out one bolt, put in the rivet, tighten that one down, take out the next bolt. Just using the bolts to keep the alignment proper and square. And once you've got two or three rivets in, you can then take all the bolts out and then it gets faster. Then you move on to the next angle and the next buffer beam. Dead easy. Again, this is a tool made it myself, it's gonna last me forever. I've given it a coat of gray spray, a uh, gray primer paint, just to stop it riveting. Stop it riveting, good God. Stop it rusting. Right, okay guys, I think this video has gone on just about long enough. Look out for some time in the future, um, if this has been of interest to you, of course. Look out sometime in the future. You'll see this in use when I start putting the loco frames together. But that's a little video for today. Um, I might actually forward this on to the guy on the Facebook uh, channel and it'll give him an idea of what's involved in making uh, your own rivet press. As I say, this is for a seven and a quarter. It's very heavy duty. 
I know for some of the smaller gauges, uh, something like gauge one, they actually take a pair of uh, mole grips and adjust those. And it's very similar because they're pressing, you know, things like one sixteenth or one thirty second copper rivets. This is designed for seven and a quarter using three sixteenth iron rivets. All right, guys, once again, please like, subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. Um, yeah, this is the chef signing out for today and I'll see you speak to you. See you on the channel sometime again soon. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. See you later. Bye bye.